But we both love water. And so it was important for us both to be close to water, but also close to nature. Living on a float home just seemed like this amazing way to have access to nature and to be so close to the city still because we both work in the city and so that was definitely something that we took into consideration. So we built, well we started building the house about three years ago. So we were actually living in a boat a power kind of fishing trawler and we loved it. We lived in a float home community, but we would have been kicked out if someone else had come in with a float home. So Tim had this great idea that we should move onto a float house. And Tim and I started drawing out our floor plans and had this vision to just have everything super open concept because our philosophy is just less is more and we're very mindful of things that we bring in. It was completely our own design. Mm -hmm. We had someone build our base and our exterior. They were building it the shape of a boat house, mm -hmm. which was a boat shed and we just filled it in so that it would be a float home instead. And then we could find enough tradespeople. Tim's actually a plumber by trade, so we knew that we could get enough people to help us build a house once we had the shell. And it really just seemed like once we made that decision to move onto a float home, everything just really flowed together. And next thing you knew, we were moved in. And so we've been here for just over two years. Living here, it's like coming to a vacation every single night. And then every day you go back to work, but it's literally perfect. For me, it blends the comforts of home, but also like one of the things I loved on my boat was to feel like I was part of nature and be out in the wild and out and feeling the storms and all the rest of it. And even on a float home, you do feel like if it's stormy out or whatnot, you do feel a house moving and rocking and all of that which is all stuff that you just love. A float home is the same as a house on land, except it floats on the water. When it comes to the foundation, there was a few options. I mean, concrete is one of the, it's the best higher quality options, but it's also very pricey. So we ended up going with styrofoam, which we encased in pressure treated wood. And that has a lifespan of like upwards of 30 years. Yeah, because styrofoam is actually not allowed to be used by itself. It has to be completely contained. If you don't have a good base, there can be infestations of rodents or yeah. beavers or muskrats, those sorts of things. So you just really want to make sure that your home is really well enclosed and ultimately that you have enough flotation because weight really does matter. We definitely designed our home over and above. It's twice as much as what it actually needs. Mm -hmm. Our main float size is 20 feet by 40 feet, which is standard for most float homes. That's most marinas are made to accommodate a 20 foot by 40 foot house. We've put a, a deck on it that is about, it's eight feet by 20 feet. And then on the back, we have another deck that just goes across the back. The house itself is only 30 feet long total. And we have two floors, which is 1200 square feet. So as you walk in, it's super open concept. We've got the stairs that take you upstairs and then this way is over to the kitchen. So I wanted to have a space that allowed me to feel a part of friends and family when they're over, when I'm cooking. I love cooking. So we decided to put an island here just to have spaciousness for like preparing meals. On this side, we've got our um, gas range stovetop. And so we've got a propane tank outside. And then over here is our living room. And this is actually one of my favorite spaces. We don't actually have a ton of windows in our home. So I just really wanted like a really big window to allow in a ton of light. And then over here, we have an infrared sauna that we actually got off an old neighbor who used to live on a float home. And then out here, we've got our patio door. 
that just takes you out and gives you the most amazing view of the river. This is actually a fairly new structure that Tim just built and we wanted a space that we could stay really cozy and dry under and it's actually perfect because we get the evening sun here and then if we want sun we can stay on this side. We've got a barbecue and we've got all our little plants and it's just really perfect. Like this view just makes you want to be out here all the time and that's really what we wanted when we built this. So this is our bathroom. This is our stand-up shower. It's got the two different types of uh, shower heads. We didn't use any concrete because it would be a little bit too heavy, but we decided to go with this concrete overlay. So we took it all the way up in the shower and then we also have it on the floor. And this is our cast iron tub that I found on Craigslist. We ended up just spray painting the legs matte black. And then we've got this vanity that we ended up making out of old cedar wood from the beach. So this is our laundry room and we've got our hot water tank as well. It's the perfect size for us and it's so nice just to be able to do laundry at home too. We've got the stairs that take you upstairs and then we've got our really nice handle that we ended up getting from the beach from some driftwood. And then this is our bedroom. So it's really, really minimal. I didn't want a ton of things. Um, I don't actually really work from home either anymore. So this desk is really just a place that I have an option to work from home. And then we decided to put in these drawers, which I really love because everything's just hidden inside, but it gives us a bunch of extra space. And then when we have family or friends staying over, we've got an extra queen bed over here. And one of my favorite things is actually this window because it looks right out to the most beautiful landscape. When we were planning the house, we were humming and hawing about perhaps having a wood stove, which I think we definitely still want, but there's a few sort of challenges with regards to house insurance but yeah. we did splurge and we got um, in for heating in our bathroom um, overall we heat the house with about one heater and we don't really need cooling because on the river like the breeze you just open a couple windows and and it's totally nice and cool most marinas will allow for either a 60 amp or a 100 amp electrical service um, ours is 100 amp here. For the water, uh, same thing, all marinas will have their water hoses and water connections. And unfortunately, there are a lot of marinas that aren't too careful with their sewage, which is not the best thing on the river, but uh, ours is all connected and always has been to the street. We definitely didn't have a huge budget to do this, but we had a little bit of savings and so we just planned a smaller footprint float home. So the float home all in was about $120,000 with the full build, even furniture. That being said, we saved so much in the trades. Um, Tim did our plumbing, Tim did the electrical, and then his brother did a lot of the build out of the interior. Plumbing's a challenge in winter. And it just means you have to leave your tap on, uh, not only for your water, so your water doesn't freeze, but if there's a sewage pump system, all of that piping has to be actively being used, otherwise it'll freeze solid. What other challenges? Window washing, if you're only tied up on one side, <laughs> like we were before. Then you have to wash your windows by boat. Yeah, not a lot of challenges <clears throat> though. I mean, it's honestly like living on a house, but just floating on water. But when we come home, this is definitely where we rest. And so that we're always energized to, you know, go into work. We both own a company called Yogu. We make a dairy-free coconut yogurt. That's something that we're really passionate about and mm -hmm. really just giving a better tasty option to people that can't have dairy. I founded the company five years ago and, you know, working really mm -hmm. hard to build this startup.
you have insurance, there's no issues. Um, you know, it's a pretty basic fee. You have to get it surveyed. It's like a house inspector, I guess. And on a float home, we own the physical house, but we rent mortgage. So basically the slip in which your boat or your house goes in. At our last marina, we were paying $1,200 as mortgage. Right here, we pay $1,500. We actually loved where we were living, but our landlord at our old float home marina, he actually decided to increase our mortgage over 35% and mm -hmm. virtually gave us no notice. I mean, living on the, living on a float home it's is like the wild west. <laughs> anything goes and so these sorts of rent increases they can happen with no notice so there is no real security when it comes to mortgage and there are not a ton of spaces available but we've landed in this really great community and it feels like there is a lot of like stability here and so we towed our house from where we were living and now we're living here which is super super exciting think that when you live on a float home, you want to exchange stories, you want to exchange challenges and what has helped you and what hasn't worked. And, you know, I think you just learn a lot from that. And we've learned a ton throughout the process. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also follow Jade and Tim and Yogu Foods on Instagram and on their website. Thanks for watching.